We are now okay. I'm back in open one. session. Yep. Tell me when everyone's in. It looks like it, except for I don't see time yet. Hmm? Sorry, I can No, I just said it looks Mom. like it, but I don't see Todd yet. OK. Mom. Sorry, I couldn't get my mom's outside the door. So, well, we can, you don't have Todd yet. Oh, you know, I wonder if when I, hold on. I wonder if when I emailed him last week, it was the other link. Oh, possibly. Because I did it right away. So we're in open session. We're um, going to use this 2A agenda item as an opportunity to provide any updates on the budget work currently being done. Um, and we do have Todd Gray, who's able to join us, not specifically to speak um, on numbers, but to talk to us about um, his, well, Allison, what what is he going to talk to us about? Um, just update us on the work that he's done so far in the district, uh, what next steps are, what he's seen up to this point. Um, he's had some connections that we talked about last week with is that yeah i think someone uh a couple people could go out and mute jenny maybe from it maybe hi <laughs> my apologies my kid is piano lessons right now <laughs> no worries musical accompaniment is actually <laughs> something we should explore as a board one for three i know <laughs> like, and i feel like it's intermission anyway right now right <laughs> wellness and mental health you know have a oh little oh my gosh i'm sorry i don't think the link is the right link in board docs yet Connor, no just oh i just copied it and i still think it's not the right one can you oh, text him the correct link do you have his phone number yeah i do and i emailed i'm emailing him the problem is i'm in the meet let's see if i can do it this way in the meeting you know it's one of those things where you can get it outside of the meeting um, but if you use your phone allison you could go into your um, work email and then copy oh, the link here. that was oh great you guys can all teach me how to do that next time <laughs> Sorry. Okay, here he comes. Hi, Todd. Sorry about that. No problem. Hi, Mr. Gray. Hi. Hi, everyone. Hello. We're all ears for your for your okay. <laughs> well, um, over the past couple of days, I've met with uh, PMA Bear that that are people that are familiar with this. Um, I did get from the auditors the 2022-23 trial balance. Um, now it was done in, in function format, which is okay, but um, assuming there's not many more um, adjustments to this, uh, which I'm assuming there could be one more from a reconciliation, um, for 22-23, I'm looking at a deficit of about 3.6 million. And that puts your your fund balance somewhere around 750,000 uh, going into 23-24. So my goal was to, to, to try to get 22-23 uh, uh, hammered out as, as quickly as possible so that we have a basis for comparing to 23-24 uh, and I think I'm pretty close to that. Um, the only thing I don't have is, is you know, I'd have to get the breakout of salaries, benefits, and so on. But the total numbers by function, uh, which is what you approve, um, looks like they're in place. And I, 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 from my understanding, there's not many more adjustments that have to be made. Now, one of the things I did see is that in 22-23, um, 
you had zero Title I funds, so no one applied for Title I, and I'm guessing that's a pretty significant number. Um, I, I it, it was hard for me to get, I, I don't have some of the access, so I don't know how much of your SR1 and SR2 funds were used, but my understanding is you have um, roughly 700 and some left in SR3, which is good, which will be helpful. Um, but what I don't, I it's just kind of baffling that the revenues in 22, 23 were uh, over 2 million less than the prior year. And what's confusing about that is your, your SR1 and 2 were not that big to, to, to make that big of a difference. Um, obviously the title one, you throw that in there, it's gonna look a little bit better, but you're still gonna be off probably by about 1.8 million less. As for expenditures, um, you were over by about uh, 2 million. So you combine the under the 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 overage and the expenditures and the under revenue and that that uh, gets you up to that three point six million. So, oh my god! So oh, I thought that we weren't. I thought our lawyer said we weren't supposed to be um, talking. Okay, I don't know. Like, if we should be asking questions to dive into the numbers, or just these surface numbers are okay for now because. Yeah, I, I think like um, the, the process and like where we're at next steps was, um, be, you know, for, for open session. But then I just also wanted to talk a little bit about what he's recommended. So we have a meeting with DPI on Monday to look at title funds, to look at high cost um, special education funds, to look at um, an ESSER. And so we're meeting with DPI on Monday with uh Jenica and Kelly and myself to dig into that to see what additional things we want to make sure we're applying for this year. This year, but not retroactively. I'm uh, going to have a conversation hopefully. with them about that. Yeah, we're going to have a conversation with them about that. Yeah. Okay, so both to talk about retroactive and um, forward. Looking. Yep. There are a couple uh, visitors who are unmuted. Could you please mute yourselves? Um, okay. So. I'm looking to, I, there were a couple people I was able to mute. Okay, I, um, is there anything else of, of note, um, Todd? Uh, no, I mean, I, I, the, I, I guess the good news is you are going into 23-24 with a positive fund balance. And, you know, we're just going to have to work to make sure that that you maintain that. Um, I, these are the numbers from the auditors. And that's, to me, that's the numbers that matter because they're putting out your your annual financial statements. And, you know, they've hopefully gone through that and they aren't missing anything either, but I am going to try to review some of these revenues. Um, uh, some of the, some of the areas look a little bit low, um, you know, and, and if there's hopefully there's some out there that we can, again, uh, go after retroactively, that'll make this picture look much better. Is it possible that the auditors received um inaccurate information that they couldn't yes. wouldn't be able to yes. so is there yeah. value in reviewing all the information that was provided to them and what well, i don't know is that yeah the i mean most the likely they did talking about? most likely they did receive um not good information. Um, and that's what I will now that I, I kind of see where this thing has landed, I will go over that with them and saying, you know, these look way off. Could there be something out there that that you didn't receive that you aren't able to uh, put into the trial balance? Um, you know, your adjustments, you know, look, look at their adjustments. Um, it, it all depends on how, how um, you know what kind of field work they did, how deep they dug in that particular case. Um, 
in case they're worse, that they did get some bad information. That's next step. But I, I, I guess I have a certain amount of confidence because they have made, I have seen their adjusting journal entries, which seem appear to be normal. Um, but it, it just seems like there's some some data that's potentially missing that maybe they didn't get, especially in the area of the revenues. I see, Carla, go ahead. Carla? Yep, thanks oh, okay. for the initial information, Todd. Um, I just wanna make sure I heard that right. So I'm a little startled um, on the revenues. When you talk about revenues being two million less than the prior year, right. like I would have to go back and look at the actual budgets that were approved by the board and compare revenue to that, right? Are you saying that the yeah. revenue can under what was in our approved budget? Um, I'm I'm looking at what was the actual numbers for the audit. Okay. I'm just I'm and just focusing on the audit because when I look at prior years, um, I, I the the twenty one twenty two budget was I believe done by a different uh, business manager. So at that point, the budget numbers become moot and it's actual. So I just compare to actual because I'm trying to determine actual expenditures for 22-23 as a comparison. Um, so at that point, uh, the the budget numbers become kind of moot. Where the budget numbers are important you. are 23-24. And then you mentioned, um, I'm just curious, you mentioned there were a couple of places where look the revenue numbers, numbers look off, like they seem yes. low. Can you yes. give me a couple of examples? Well, obviously Title I, um, Federal, uh, that's federal zero, projects. Right? Um, that title one number is zero. That's that's zero, right? Um, for the auditors, um, I'd I'd like to look at you know the ESSER funding because you had um, uh, between one, two, and three, and in, in the amount that you use, you you probably uh, had about six hundred thousand dollars over the last two years. Now maybe more was used in twenty one, twenty two, but I still would like to look at that to make sure all of it was accessed. Um, uh, and, and you're not yet able to tell us how we came in over on budget, right? Like what areas we came in over? In um, that, that's what I have to dig to. I, I just got the, what are called the, the, the function areas, but th they're not broken down by salary and benefits. And that's my next step. I'm, I'm you know, I, I can probably get that relatively quickly, but it's just going to take some yeah. digging. Um, I know you're just flying into this. Yeah. yeah. You've dive, diving in head first, and I appreciate right. it. Um, do you have a sense yet of whether we should be getting a backward looking forensic evaluation of the budget? Uh, like a deep dive? What I'm not, thinking not, about is the same question we're all asking yeah. are the numbers the auditors got accurate? And do we need someone to put in heavy time to? That's, that's, that's what I'm going to be uh, working with Diane from Schumacher trying to figure out, oh, you know, go through okay. this. And then I, I just want to know what their source documents were to check this out. Now, a lot of the grants, you know, that comes right from DPI. Um, you know, the property tax was easy. That comes, I mean, most of the revenues um, come right off of, of documents, either from the locally, the state or the federal government. So that should be pretty easy to corroborate those. It's the expenditures that might might take a little bit more work. All right. So so at some point you'll be able to tell us how the how we went from what was reported as our fund balance right. to right. what you're discovering yeah. is the actual fund balance. I think right. we're we're gonna yeah. need that at some point and yeah. I guess I'm wondering what the the timeline is to be able to get to that. I'm I'm as, as soon as I can. Like I said, I'm I'm uh, I'll be working with people Monday. I'll be coming in Tuesday uh, to work with Teresa to do some digging. I want to. I I'm trying to see if we can nail down that June June of 2023 um, bank wreck because there's a two hundred thousand um, dollar difference there and which i've already built in as a worst case scenario but um i, I want to see where that leads me and then i just need to know what 
uh, where they have gotten their their numbers to back up their audit numbers. I mean, okay. I, I'm, I'm guessing that the revenues, like I said, could have all been checked um, very easily with, with state and federal documents. Um, it's the expenditures that are that are probably more concerning um, where all those numbers came from. And I don't know if they examine or how they examine, um, you know, what techniques they use to examine those expenditures. But um, I, the, the bigger concern is the revenues. It just, that that's the one that kind of stands out as being um, potentially they're missing something. So I, I'm sorry to seem dense here. I just, I'm so startled. I want to make sure I understand. When you say they stand out, do you mean we might have gotten them somewhere or we could still get them or that it, we just. Both of those, both of those. Either they, you know, missed picking them up. In other words, they weren't entered. You, you, you got them, but they weren't entered into the system. Um, and then at that point, maybe the auditors didn't realize they had to go um, check that out. Uh, obviously, the Title I. Um, you know, we'll we'll be meeting with DPI Monday morning. We'll kind of find out what where that's at, and there could be some other grants too, other state grants, um, which there's there's funding out there, and, and whether those grants are for Fund Ten or Fund Twenty Seven, um, it helps it helps Fund Ten either way because the more grants that go into Fund Twenty Seven, yeah. reduces the the inner fund transfer, which which helps helps the Fund Ten picture. Okay, thank you so much. I don't know how to raise my hands. <laughs> so, um, the so about the revenues where you're saying maybe we got them, they weren't recorded. Is it possible we didn't apply for them or utilize them? And yeah, yeah, that's that's the other possibility. I mean, there's a couple things. Number one, okay. they weren't applied for, uh, or, or or they um, they were and they just there okay. was error somewhere. Uh, a lot of times, you you'll go into DBI system and you'll apply and you think you've got it and if you don't go back and check eventually and there's some kind of error it'll sit there and maybe or maybe not they'll let you know that hey you know <laughs> you've got an error but um you, you've got to keep checking that because it, it could be that's all it is is they applied there was an error and no one went back and checked with the assumption oh we're going to get this um and then again yeah some some things might not have been recorded um that that could have been the other the other scenario okay um could you perhaps walk us through your next steps and if you have recommendations for what our next steps are uh... um, yeah i i am going to um like i said i'm going to be monday morning with dpi i'm going to be connecting excuse me with the auditor uh monday on on corroborating numbers or, or or the source documents from where those came from uh i have talked about pma and and, and baird pma was doing a, a cash flow um i'm going to get we, we have one cash flow it's looking pretty good but i'm going to get some of this information to them to say you know are are you overstating your revenues in your in your cash flow make sure he's not doing that um the other piece is um i i i I think Allison has maybe found a, an individual who could come in as an interim, uh, an individual I know very well, I've known for many years. Um, I, you know, that might be something that if if she's able to connect there, I would like to have a conversation with with him and kind of bring him up to speed and and, and help him um, wherever he needs it. Uh, just and just digging through, I've got mounds of paper. <laughs> <laughs> to dig through, uh, which I have been. And and thankfully, the auditors have provided a lot of information in, as well to dig through. So um, I, I, you know, totally understand that you want to get this done ASAP. I certainly would because it's very unsettling not knowing where, where these are at. But I feel I'm getting a little bit, not a little bit, maybe pretty close here to what I can tell you for 22, 23 as a final number. And then from there, we start building out what, what the issues are with 23, 24. There is some good news. My understanding is um, there's a pretty significant um, 
amount of dollars left in ESSER three. Um, you'll have till uh, September of 2024 to access that. So you you know that's that's in good shape. Um, and again, um, there could be some Title three coming monies coming from the prior year as well as the current year, and those things are all going to help out the situation as well. And we'll know more of that on Monday. Okay. Um, thank you. Uh, does anybody else have comments or questions? Um, I don't. And again, what I have here, you know, is not is not gospel. It's just yeah, based on what information I have uh, to date. Um, I, I it, it you know we like I said if we find some of these other revenues the picture looks a little bit brighter. Yeah, it's just um, <clears throat> sorry. I have a feeling we're all probably a little bit in shock. We were hoping for a not you to tell us the worst case scenario is the worst case scenario, but I also well I would say I'm I'm, I'm thinking for for twenty two twenty three this this might be. The worst case scenario that I'm looking at that we're looking at now. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I, again, I I have to trust that the auditors have done their due diligence and have, they have they have put together all the correct suggesting journal entries. Uh, when I talked to Diane the other day, she made it sound like they were all done except for the adjustment that's going to come from the final um, bank reconciliation. Okay, so oh, can I ask oh, a question? Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that we've got teachers and families here and I think yeah. they are probably asking a really fundamental question. Are we going to make payroll and keep our schools closed in that coming sure. for the rest of the that, that part, that, yeah, We're making just, payroll. Our schools open. I that. You said yeah. closed, Carla. No. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Did I say it wrong? I'm sitting here. I think yeah. that's, I think people need maybe not reassurance, of course, but like a real yeah. you, yeah. Todd, from you as an expert yeah. on whether we're going to make payroll and keep our doors open. I've been paying the bills all week. Yeah. I'd like to yeah, you, you, there's, there's, there's lots of alternatives to, you know, positive cash flow. Um, there, there's a lot of things you can do there that, that, you know, are, are going to be okay. And um, I've seen, you know, worse situations than this and it's, it's turned out. Um, as I said, back in 2000, uh, seven, um, the Waukesha School District borrowed $65 million and invested in credit default swaps. When I came in June of 2008, um, that was part part way through the big crash. And and so shortly after I got in, got in my office, I got a note from the Bank of New York saying, uh, your your investments are worth zero. We want our 65 million margin call. And we made it through that. So I mean that that was, you know, that could have been very, very devastating situation. But you know, it's just we just need to put put the pieces together and um it'll fall in place. But the 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 payroll issue, the paying the bills, yeah, there's there's all sorts of uh, different alternatives you could do. And that I ha I have just I have discussed that with both uh PMA and, and and Baird and they're like yeah we have we have things that we can do to make sure that that is not an issue. And, and for people who are listening, could you explain what PMA and Baird are? Well, PMA is uh, the uh, investment advisors, finance advisors. Um, Baird is is all does also does finance advising, but they're also underwriters. Um, so you know you're you you have. For example, you have short-term debt. One of that, you know, that would have gone through uh, PMA. Um, you know, they help you. Or actually, I'm sorry. I think your your short-term debt you went directly through Corals and Brady. But um, that's what they help with in those particular cases. So there's there's opportunities to use that if you need to. Um, that's that that's typically what districts do when there's you know, uh, you have cash flow shortages throughout the year. Uh, a lot of districts have that and use some short-term funding and then that gets paid off the next fiscal year. 
So um, I'm going to summarize. And then if anyone on the call would like to, has a question comment, um, we'll do our best to um, answer those. But next steps for Todd include diving deeper into the numbers um, so that we can have a more specific understanding of some of those pieces you've talked about. We can understand where we are and if we need to do a deeper forensic dive going backwards. And then from there, it's going to be, or simultaneously, well, no, we probably need the numbers to do budget strategy, which Todd's also yeah. going to be helping us with. Yeah. And that's the bigger picture of like, when we know what it is, we're going to move forward, we're going to move through it. And then uh, we also have to have our eye on day-to-day -day operations. And just, I think I can give a quick update on that, which is, we have been working diligently as a board um, and admin team to get um, names and suggestions and Todd as, as well. And we've talked to over 17 different people or firms or organizations. Um, we've had two express interest, you know, with the ability to really help us. One's very interested and one is, it's possible. So um, we are going to look to meet with that person uh, as early as we can next week. And they've been highly regarded and recommended by our legal team, by WASB, by WASDA, by WASBO, by Todd. Um, and so we'll we'll share more when we have something definitive to share. But those are currently the steps in process. Am I missing anything, board? That we have? Okay. So if anybody, this would be your opportunity to raise your hand and I'm not seeing any. Um, so, anybody? Danielle, can, sorry, Danielle, yeah, go ahead. Had like one more quick little thing, just thinking Thanks. about the fact that a lot of people logged in. So, just another piece, just to know, um, and I know I emailed this out, but how much the support staff and the admin team is jumping in. The admin team is sending things to Todd every day. Jenica and Kelly are diving into. Um, wise and looking at title and looking at special ed and how we can um, create more revenue and claim some more things. And the secretary team um, jumping in to pull like the duties, all those extra things with buildings and grounds, food service. So we are, we're humming and everybody's jumping in and I just appreciate all the help and the support and just knowing that we're not going to drop any services or supports um, and we're going to get it done. So that's all I want to say. Thanks, Daniel. Oh, no. Yep. Okay. So um, thank you, Mr. Gray. We'll be in touch. Hopefully see you early next week as well. Um, yep, yeah, no, I'll, I'll, I'll be connecting with Allison every day. Every, every time I get some updates, uh, I usually let her know where, where things are at and um, I'll, I'll continue that. And... Okay. And um, all right. Thanks. So we'll just move on. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. We can move on to future yeah. meeting dates. Um, but I think we need to wait on Allison to get some more information, right? For us to schedule a time to be able to meet with a potential interim Monday or Tuesday. Yep. Yeah. Yep. So that would be the next the next meeting. But I don't know if you guys wanted to do something else after that or you want to wait until that one. Well, should we schedule one for later in the week? Because we know that we are our intention is to meet twice a week just to make yeah. sure or at least have those dates on so that if we need them, we have them. So maybe yeah. let's schedule, schedule that later on. Okay. Um, would Maybe Wednesday work? Wednesday. I'm available until 545. It's Nicolay's oh. parent information night for my future freshmen. So could we do another four? Uh, 24th? Sorry, I'm at fourth. Yeah, yeah, the twenty fourth at four is what I'm suggesting. Yeah, I could do that. I uh, wouldn't be able to. I'm actually blocked off between four thirty and six on Wednesday. Um, I mean, I could do a brief one at four, but yeah, I guess I'd prefer later time if possible. And I know that uh, interferes with Carla. Wait, when did you say you said four to five thirty? I at four, oh. four thirty to something, right? Well, so I could meet at four from my car on uh, Wednesday. Why don't, we four, okay. why don't we say, I mean, if you can do it, let's say four o'clock and I'll just leave when I have to. Yeah, and, I can do one hold up. Karen, I don't know when your day ends. Um, I'm committed until 5.30 on that day, but we don't, I mean, if, as long as we know we'll have quorum, then. Absolutely. Okay. 
So it's Thursday at four and notice it for an open Wednesday. Wednesday. Oh my God. Sorry. Wednesday, the 24th at four. Notice an open and a closed and make that closed so that we can talk about deep dive numbers if we need to. Um, or and that's uh, Zoom, right? Yeah. Okay. Probably. I don't know. We'll have, might have to think of a couple more things. Okay. And then a budget update and future meeting dates similar to this. And can you make, well, it's a special meeting. So I'll just continue to take participation on the agenda items. Is that a special meeting? You can only speak about the special meeting topic. Yep. Okay. Um, sorry, I'm still, I'm processing still. Okay, so uh, let's, anybody want to move to adjourn? I'll do that. I'll second that. All in favor, voice vote aye. 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 All right, Thank you, everyone who joined our meeting. Thank you. Yeah. Have a good night. Good weekend.